Welcome back, welcome back, and you know, glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but be doers of the word. Yes, we are on our regular reading today also, by the way, which means we be on the book of Esther as well. We start the book of Esther. With that being said, I hope when you woke up this morning, you gave Father God honor, you gave him praise, you gave him glory, because it belonged to him and only him, hallelujah. He woke us up this morning, we didn't wake up on our own, hallelujah. Count your blessings. We are truly blessed. Many did not open their eyes this morning. And that would I be in, with that being said, I love you all with the love of the Lord and Father God loves you more. Let us go right into prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. We say thank you. We are so very grateful and thankful for who you are, Father God, to us. Who you are for us, who you are to us, for us, and in us, Lord God. We say thank you. Father God, we can never say enough thank you. Thank you, Father God, for all that you have to that you do, that you have done, and you will do. We thank you, Father God, because you are our Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and the earth. You are awesome, truly awesome. Awesome in all your ways. There is none that can compare to you. None can take the place of you. None can turn us away from you, Lord God. None. None can pluck us from your hands. Glory be to God. Nothing can come between the love of God and his children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for your outstretched arms. We thank you because you are the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you, Father God, because we know our steps in our life are ordered by you. We thank you, Father God, that you guide us to all truth. You give us gifts to help us along the way. You teach us what we need to know before you make us aware of things to come before they happen. You show us love, Father God. You pour your love upon your children. You are a holy, pure, righteous, nor no sin, just God. Faithful and true is thy name. Holy, holy, holy is thy God. Be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, because you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. You are the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to salvation except through the Son to the Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for guiding us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Thou preparest a table before us in the presence of thine enemies. Thou anoint our head with oil, thy cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we know that you are our Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and the earth. You're truly awesome. Your ways are way above ours. Your thoughts are not like ours. You are not a man that you should lie. God, the truth in every man, a liar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Including myself. Father God, we thank you for your protection, your daily protection, for your daily provision. Father God, you know we have need of before we even ask. We must seek ye the kingdom of God and everything else will be added there too. Hallelujah. Let us be content where we are. Hallelujah. Seeking the Lord's face each and every day. Striving for holiness and holiness only. And that's the only thing that matters. There's absolutely no excuses and no compromising whatsoever. Holiness only. Without it, no man is going to see God. And without it, no man is going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Holiness only. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And we pray for all our brethren and saints to be on one accord, and that is holiness. We are not just the brethren and the saints, we are also the holy, courageous army of God, warriors for Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we unknowingly open any doorways or entryways of evil that are now closed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we repent for all our wrongdoing, past, present, and future transgressions. We have crucified our flesh, we don't live it like the sin. But we all have fallen short of the glory. Not one is good, not one but God. Please forgive us where we fall short, my Father. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for any and everything. We say thank you, Father. 
any evil curse, evil generational curse, evil covenant, witchcraft, spells, voodoo, any and every form of witchcraft, any and every form of sorcery, they're all broken. They're all broken right here, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We overtake them all, bind them, and cast them down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we know, and we proclaim Jesus Christ and he alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we, we plead the blood of Jesus over all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask, may you please place a head of protection, not only a head of protection, a firewall of protection around all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask, may you please bless all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. Only you know we have need of, Father God. It's your will, your way. Hallelujah. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for all to come to the truth. That they give their life to you today before it's too late. And if they've given their life to you and fallen away, for whatever reason it may be, may they repent and turn from their wicked ways and receive you into their life to be their Lord and Savior today. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we, we don't have time. We wish as you wish, Father God, for none to perish. We ask that you reach out to any and all, Father God. That includes the lukewarm Christians, the backsliders, those that aren't even with their mouth and their heart is far away, and the lost souls as well. Father God, we ask you to reach out to any and all. We wish as you wish for none to perish. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your holy angels that watch over us day and night, even while we work and play and while we at rest. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, for the remission of our sins paid in full. But we know we need to work out our own salvation and fear and trembling of the Most High, and we must study to show thyself approved. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, also known as the Comforter, that guides us to all truth. Father, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, and you are still here. And as you fight for me, Lord God, I will fight for you as well. Hallelujah. I will continually fight. Glory be to God. Treat, uh, Father God, teach my hands to, to uh, War and teach my fingers to fight. I'm going to fight, Lord God. Fight that good fight of faith. We know our fight is not carnal, but we're always in a fight. We walk by faith and not by sight. So let us all be mindful. Let us be mindful what we do and what we say, who we say, what we say to people, how we treat others. Speaking to others, thank you, Father God, for the experience yesterday. And you know, let me, I'm going to say this. Um, for all of us to get up, everybody that gets to open their eyes, you better thank your, you better count your blessings. I tell you, you better thank the Lord. You better praise his holy name. You better sing songs unto him and just say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While I have my breath, while I have the breath of life in me, while I am still breathing, because we don't breathe on our own, it's all Father God. I say, thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I tell you. A lot of people take things for granted. The Lord, I will never take a thing for granted. You know, I go out among the least of us. And they are so very grateful for any and everything. They are very thankful. They let, And when you let them know that the Father loves them, they know that. They are more grateful than most people. I don't care who you are, what you are. They are more grateful. People that, that to quote unquote, the norm, that get so much, that have so much, they're so ungrateful and get more and more ungrateful by the day. You understand what I'm saying? And then you have those that we call, quote unquote, the least of us. I mean, so very grateful. They have nothing and the little that you give them, they're willing to give it to the next person. What person that you know have so little and they will get willing to give it away till you give them more because you know why? Their heart is in the right place. They have the love of God. That's how we all need to be. I thank you, Father, for the experience. I'm humbled every time. I think I'll be humbled until I come around those that are truly appreciative. Then I know how to be truly humble. My Lord, my God, I thank you, Father. Thank you, my Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Father. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We pray, Father God, that you would pray for us, that our faith never fails us. And Father God, may we strive for holiness. Help us to stand upright. Help us to guard our eyes, heart, mind, and soul at all times. Because evil is waiting to pounce even at the door. But God, your love is out there. We have those out there that truly love you. Truly, truly love you. Even when they have nothing. They are love and they confess you. And not only that, let me know that you are love and you are willing to forgive. I tell you, able to own whatever they have done. I can't say that. There, there, there's nothing I can say that could take away what I experienced. You see? And any and every time I go around them, I just feel so truly blessed. It's a humbling experience. Very humbling. My Lord. Thank you for the experience. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. We are truly loved and we are truly blessed. Count your blessings. Give Father God all the honor, praise, and glory. Thank you, my Father. Hallelujah. Father God, we can never say enough thank you. We're so very grateful and thankful to you. And each and every one of us, please get your life in order. Please, please get your life in order. Have reverence for the Lord thy God. Please get your lives in order. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of the day. And we're not going to battle about what, who, when, where. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to rely on the word of God and his word alone. Hallelujah. We don't have time to battle about who's right, who's wrong, who cares. It's only about what the Father says. That's the only thing that matters. So you show a love. You show love no matter what, who, where. Show love to the love of God. You be a reflection in the Most High God. Everything you say and do. Help us, my Father. Help us, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To be a reflection of you in everything we say and do. Let every word that come out of our mouth be a blessing and not a curse. In everything we touch and what we do, let it be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Let our light so shine before men. And that seen and unseen, no matter where we may be, who, among, who we are among. Let our light so shine before men. Let it show our good works and glorify our Father which are in heaven. Hallelujah. Let us stand upright at all times. No matter where we may be. No matter who we're around. Be mindful to show love. The love of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we can't say thank you enough. We're so very grateful and thankful to you, for you. We're grateful for who you are to us, for us, and in us, Lord God. We're thankful for any and everything that you do have done and will do. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. We praise our holy name. You're worthy to be praised each and every day, all day. We glorify thy holy name. To God be all the honor, praise, and glory. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belong to you and only you, Father God. We say use us for your glory and your glory alone. Everything that I do, my Father, is for your glory and your glory alone. You are greatly to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. And your name is to be hallowed each and every day, all day, throughout the day. Hallelujah. And we love you, my Father, because you first loved us. And we love you with an everlasting love and will never forsake thee. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. With an holy kiss. And it's in the holy, precious, mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you have the opportunity to do so right here, right now. Please do so. And if you're going to seek him in sincerity, if you're going to give your life to Christ, make sure that you're going to seek him in sincerity and truth, that you're going to serve him and strive for holiness. If you're not willing to give your life over to Christ, you know, and you, you're ready to play a game where I'm going to accept him, but you're really not going to walk in truth, and you're really not going to seek him and follow after him, then don't. Don't bother. The devil will continue to keep you. And when he's ready, good and ready. See, a lot of people think they're going to wait to the last minute. 
and then they're going to try and receive Christ. Uh, that's another thing. The series that I'm reading, uh, the children's book series, Left Behind, let me, let me say this. I'm going to make this disclaimer right here, right now. No book is truth except the Bible. God's word. Okay? All right. When I'm reading the series of Left Behind, the kids' book, kids need to be interested in something, but they need to know, no matter what, that they can be left behind, just like, the person, just like we can. If they're not living a life of holiness, Father knows their, their hearts. If you know right from wrong, you're supposed to do better. Parents are supposed to raise the children up by the word of God. Okay? By the Bible. And children have had a lot of time on their hands with nothing to do. Even if they're doing school lessons on, 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 online, they still have plenty of time on their hands. How many of you are giving them a, give, uh, reading the book with them, the, the word? Of, how many people are giving them a book to read, period? How many people are reading the Bible to their children, reading with them? Are y'all praying with them? Are you teaching them how to pray? Are you raising them up by the word of God? Or are you sparing the rod and spoiling the child and giving them everything and, and let them have that mentality of the they deserve? Are you giving them that mentality or are you training them up right? Well, with that being said, yes, I'm reading the series of uh, Left Behind Kids series. That gives the kids some time to think, to hear something other than uh, TV, video games, those computer systems and all of that. Okay? It's something for them to do. And they also need to know, even if I don't, I don't watch TV, number one. I haven't watched TV in over five years. I don't have social media. The only social media I have is YouTube. Okay? I don't have all that stuff, so I don't know who does what, what, when, where, how. I don't care. You understand? And there are very few brothers and sisters that I do go on the channel to li listen to. I don't follow everybody. Glory be to God. I have discernment. I know who's right, who's wrong, who, who's living right, and who's not. You'll know them by their fruit. Okay? I'm reading the series because I thought it was pretty interesting when I read one of the books. And I thought, you know... There's nothing wrong with the kids and understanding. Okay, they have venture in there and that kind of thing. But I'm not into movies and that. I don't know what's in the movies. I don't know what's on the TV because I don't watch it. But I do hear from my brother and sister here and there when they tell about what's going on. What's on Facebook, this and that. I don't look at a lot of that. I don't have any of that. Okay? I believe in the, the way things used to be. Yes, we need a phone. And the phones I used to have, I was so content with that simple a uh, phone that used to flip, but they intended you can't have that any longer. You must have a smartphone. And I know why they want you to have a smartphone now. Not so smart after all. Okay? <clears throat> so many people don't even know how to remember a phone number because they contend you to rely on these gadgets and these devices in a smartphone. Remember, all these things were made by man, so they are fallible. They are not flawless. Only God is flawless. So when I'm reading that that those books, uh, the series, that gives the, the children some time to hear something. And also, it, it may not be it may not be necessarily the word of God, but it is something to them to think about. You can be left behind, and that there is the truth. None of us want to be left behind. Uh, people think, oh, when I'm left behind, I still got time to get it right. I'm gonna tell you what. The word says, you better get it right now while you can and strive and live for holiness while you can. Now you need to be living for Christ. You need to be, you need to be living a life of holiness and striving each and every day. And I pray that the Lord prays for us that our faith don't fail us. I don't care if somebody says this time he coming that time. Read the Bible, the word of God. He'll teach you. But I still say this. Brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, don't spend the time fighting with one another over what time. He believes in the rapture. She believes in this. So who cares? It's what God says. And if they really want to know the truth, they're going to read the word of God and go down on their knees in prayer. And the Father will teach us. He will teach you. We know what the time is says. We see the scriptures. We read them. And if you read them and you cry out to the Father, he'll teach you. 
So we're not going to battle anymore about when, where, how, who's right, who's wrong, none of it. We're going to stand together in holiness. That's what matters. And stay ready at all times. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your minds. Let the Father purge us through and through. Because we need to be ready at all times. The things that are coming upon this earth, we all need to be ready. And that includes our children. Okay? That includes our children. So raise them up by the word of God. And don't let them and don't have them left behind because you get left behind. It's not fair to them. Hallelujah. With that being said, if you're ready to receive Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior, because He is love. Father God is love. And everything I tell you, I tell you out of love. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you the truth. I'll let you go on and live that crazy life of sin. And it only leads us to destruction and hell. But because I love you, I'll tell you the truth. All right? If you're ready to receive Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior, and you're truly going to seek him in sincerity and truth, then please say this prayer. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I am sorry. And please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you are the only begotten Son of God. And you died for our sins according to scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day. Thanks be to God. Which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved and have a chance at everlasting life. Help me to study your word and obey it and repent daily. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now please repent for your sins. That means you're going to turn from your wicked ways. You're going to strive for holiness and holiness only. And you are not to sin on purpose. And you ought to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations and God bless you in your walk with Christ. And remember this. It is not a religion. It's a personal relationship between you and the Lord thy God. A commitment and love. We in the body of Christ, we welcome you. Welcome my new brothers and sisters to the body of Christ. May we edify one another. Pray with and pray for one another. Pray without ceasing. Fast. Bear one another's burdens. Give love and charity because they cover a multitude of sin. Congratulations, my new brothers and sisters to the body of Christ. We love you and Father God loves you more. God bless you. To each and every one of us, please pick up your Bible, preferably the King James Version. There's so many people got it written and changing up the words and put it to their feelings. Please read God's Word, the Bible, each and every day. Go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to the Father. He'll hear your cries and he'll answer. He wants a personal relationship with each and every one of his, his children. He loves you all so very much. He has no respect of persons. Glory be to God. 
please cry out to him. And he'll answer you. He'll also teach you the word of God. He'll teach you the Bible, what it says. Glory be to God. But don't let somebody else tell you what it says. Again, read it for yourself. Take time out each day. Go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to the Father. Read the Bible. Read his word. You'll, you'll hear from him. Hallelujah. If you seek him in sincerity and truth. Glory be to God. With that being said, we're going to go into scriptures. And today, Father God has given me Job chapters 14, 15, and 16. And we shall read them. Hallelujah. Job chapter 14. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And dost thou, op dost thou open thine eyes upon such an one and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as in hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth bowls like a plant. But man dieth, and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down, and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. O oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret, until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time, and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again. All the days of my appointed time will I wait, till my change come. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee, thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. For now thou numberest my steps. Dost thou not watch over my sin? My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up mine iniquity. And surely the mountain fallen cometh to naught, and the rock is removed out of its place. The waters wear the stones. Thou washest away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and thou destroyest the hope of man. Thou prevailest forever against him, and he passeth. Thou changest his countenance, and sendest him away. His sons come to honor, and he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. Chapter 15. Then answered Eliphaz, and Tem Eliphaz the Temanite, and said, Should a wise man utter vain knowledge, and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk? or with speeches wherewith he can do no good. Yea, thou castest all fear, and restrainest prayer before God. For thy mouth uttereth thine iniquity, and thou choosest the tongue of the crafty. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, and not I. Yea, thine own lips testify against thee. Art thou the first man that was born, or was thou made before the hills? Hast thou heard the secret of God, and dost thou restrain wisdom to thyself? What knowest thou that we know that that we know not? What understandest thou which is not in us? With us are both the gray headed and the very aged men, much elder than thy father. Are the consolations of God small with thee? Is there any secret thing with thee? Why doth thine heart carry thee away? And what do thy eyes wink at, that thou turnest thy spirit against God, and lettest such words go out of thy mouth? What is man, that he should be clean? And he which is born of a woman, that he should be righteous? Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints. Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. How much more abominable and filthy is man, which drinketh iniquity like water? I will shew thee. Hear me, 
and that which I have seen, I will declare. Which wise men have told from their fathers and have not hid it? Unto whom alone the earth was given, and no stranger passed among them. The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. A dreadful sound is in his ears, and prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him. He believeth not that he shall return out of darkness, and he is waited for of the sword. He wandereth abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. Trouble and anguish shall make him afraid. They shall prevail against him as a king ready to the battle. For he stretcheth out his hand against God, and strengtheneth himself against the Almighty. He runneth upon him, even on his neck, upon the thick bosses of his bucklers, because he covereth his face with his fatness, and maketh collops of fat on his flanks. And he dwelleth in desolate cities, and in houses which no man inhabiteth, which are ready to become heaps. He shall not be rich, neither shall his substance continue, neither shall he prolong the perfection thereof upon the earth. He shall not depart out of darkness. The flame shall dry up his branches, and by the breath of his mouth shall he go away. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity, for vanity shall be his recompense. It shall be accomplished before his time, and his branch shall not be green. He shall shake off his unripe grape as a vine, and shall cast off his flower as the olive. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. They conceive mischief, and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepared deceit. Chapter 16. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldened thee that thou answerest? I also could speak as ye do. If your soul were in my soul's stead, I could heap up words against you and shake mine head at you. But I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. Though I speak, my grief is not assuaged, and though I forbear, what am I eased? But now he hath made me weary. Thou hast made desolate all my company, and thou hast filled me with wrinkles, which is a witness against me. And my leanness rising up in me beareth witness to my face. He teareth me in his wrath, who hateth me. He gnasheth upon me with his teeth. Mine enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. God hath delivered me to the ungodly, and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease. But he hath broken me asunder. He hath also taken me by my neck, and shaken me to pieces, and set me up for his mark. His arches compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder, and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. I have sold sackcloth upon my skin, and defiled my horn in the dust. My face is foul with weeping. And all my eyelids is a shadow of death. Not for any injustice in mine hands. Also my prayer is pure. O earth, cover not thou my blood. And let my cry have no place. Also now, behold, my witness is in heaven. And my record is on high. My friends scorn me. But mine eye poureth out tears unto God. O oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleadeth for his neighbor. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. Amen. Amen. Poor Joe. Wow. Okay, we're back on our regular reading, and today we start the book of Esther, chapter 1. Queen Vashti dis disobeys King Xerxes. Chapter 1 of Esther. King Xerxes of Persia lived in his capital city of Susa, and ruled 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. During the third year of his rule, Xerxes gave a big dinner for all his officials and offices. 
The governors and leaders of the provinces were also invited, and even the commanders of the Persian and Median armies came. For 180 days, he showed off his wealth and spent a lot of money to impress his guests with the greatness of his kingdom. King Xerxes soon gave dinner, gave another dinner, and invited everyone in the city of Susa, no matter who they were. The eating and drinking lasted seven days in the beautiful palace gardens. The area was decorated with blue and white cotton curtains tied back with purple linen, purple linen cords that ran through silver rings fastened to marble columns. Couches of gold and silver rested on pavement that had all kinds of designs made from costly bright colored stones and marble and mother of pearl. The guests drank from gold cups and each cup had a different design. The king was generous and said to them, drink all you want. Then he told his servants, keep their cups full. While the men were enjoying themselves, Queen Vashti gave the women a big dinner inside the royal palace. By the seventh day, King Xerxes was feeling happy because of so much wine. And he asked his seven personal servants, Mehumen, Bista, Harbona, Bigtha, Ab Abicta, Zitha, and Caucus, to bring Queen Vashti to him. The king wanted her to wear her crown and let his people and his officials see how beautiful she was. The king's servants told Queen Vashti what he had said, but she refused to go to him, and this made him terribly angry. The king called in the seven high, highest officials of Persia and Media. They were Kashina, Shetha, Admatha, Tarshish, Mears, Marsina, and Memekin. These men were very wise and understood all the laws and customs of the country, and the king always asked them what they thought about such matters. The king said to them, Queen Vashti refused to come to me when I sent my servants for her. What does the law say I should do about that? Then Memekin told the king and the officials, Your majesty, Queen Vashti has not only embarrassed you, but she has insulted your officials and everyone else in all the provinces. The women in the kingdom will hear about this, and they will refuse to respect their husbands. They will say, if Queen Vashti doesn't obey her husband, why should we? Before this day is over, the wives of the officials of Persia and Media will find out what Queen Vashti has done, and they will refuse to obey their husbands. They won't respect their husbands, and their husbands will be angry with them. Your Majesty, if you agree, you should write for the Medes and Persians a law that can never be changed. This law would keep Queen Vashti from ever seeing you again. Then you can let someone who respects you be queen in her place. When the women in your great kingdom hear about this new law, they will respect their husbands, no matter if they are rich or poor. King Xerxes and his officials liked what Memekin had said, and he sent letters to all his provinces. Each letter was written in the language of the province to which it was sent, and it said that husbands should have complete control over their wives and children. Mm. Mm. Glory be to God. Isn't that the way that it is today? The man is the head of the home. And I don't know so much about the word control, but it is a sense of control because the woman's, the wife's supposed to submit to her husband. And the children's supposed to be uh, obedient and not unruly. Hallelujah. And a man can't rule anything if he don't rule his home cor correctly. You know? So, or be head of his home and head his home Correctly in the path of righteousness. Glory be to God. Well, with that being said, tomorrow uh, we're on the second chapter of the book of Esther. Esther becomes queen. I love you all, the love of the Lord, and Father God loves you more. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of the day. And um, tell them about Father God, who is Jesus Christ in the flesh. Father God is a Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit came down that begotten body. That same Holy Spirit dwells within you and I if we seek Him in sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And don't have aught with anybody. Don't have aught with anybody. You mustn't have problems with anybody. You must forgive. I don't care who it is. Just as you wish for your Father in heaven to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions, 
you must forgive your fellow man. I don't care who he is and what he or she has done. Okay? Lord, Father God says, learn to live peaceable with all men. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Hallelujah. We're all striving for holiness. We're trying to make it into heaven. Be careful how you treat others. Treat others the way you want to be treated. And have respect for yourself. You can't expect somebody else to respect you if you don't even respect yourself. Okay? And we're not looking for accolades of men. It's for the glory of God and he alone. Hallelujah. I love you all with the love of the Lord. From youngest to oldest alike. And Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. God bless you. Bye-bye.